It's um, here. There you go. Okay. All right, guys. So we are super excited. Um, if you did not know, my name is Rachel and um, we are here. Oh, Jody just messaged me and asked if there was a password. Somebody, Melissa, if you want to text her and tell her there isn't. I'm in. I'm in. I'm good. Oh, you're in? Okay. Um, but we want to talk Jojo! Huh? <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm going to try to keep them under control. Over Don't here. keep Please. Okay. It's funner. The link is for you. Huh? Nothing. Go ahead. Okay. But we wanted to talk to you guys today about earning this incentive because we are all, if you can't tell, if you can't sense our excitement, our energy, we are all super, super stinking excited. Um, it is the best time of year to be a Sensi consultant, which is when you're going into an incentive period, when you're earning incentive, the, an incentive, you're starting fall and you're feeling that energy and that excitement that can't be replicated and you can't find it anywhere else. Um, and that's where we're at. So we wanted to share all of that and then all of our tips and tricks with all of you guys. Um, everybody, if you don't know that is gonna be speaking tonight has earned multiple, multiple incentive trips. Um, everybody has earned at least one top tier, top 100, top 50, whatever it could might be, at least, at least one, if not multiple um, trips. So everybody, has a little, you know, kind of has an idea of what they're doing uh, for the most part. And we just want to share all of our tips with you guys. So if you didn't know, which this is probably a really dumb version because you probably all know, but we August 1st start earning our next incentive and it is a cruise. That's what this stands for. According to general debt, um, it is a cruise to Alaska. If you're in region one, um, a Norwegian cruise, if you're in region two or a South Pacific cruise, if you are in region three, um, the really, and then top 75 trip for a river cruise in Amsterdam. The really super cool part about it is there's a possibility that if you earn high enough, you can choose wherever you want to go possibility. And if you choose, if you earn high enough, so keep both of those numbers in mind, but it's definitely something to reach for. Um, because personally, when I earned a region one trip in 2018 or something like that, I ended up being able to get to go to region twos because my points were high enough. And it was a really big gift to me and really exciting um, and an experience I'll never forget. So make sure you keep that in mind um, as you're earning this trip. But it's the same thing as normal. You're earning this trip through the same things that you need to be doing on a daily, a weekly, a monthly basis to grow your Sensi business. There's a reason why these points are set up the way that they are. They're not just for no reason. These points are PRV, sponsoring, pr promotions within your frontline, your personal promotions, consistency. If you notice, they're all the things that if you watch any of our videos or you, you're upline, I'm sure, whatever, they're telling you to be consistent, to sell Sensi, to sponsor people, to grow your team, and to get promotions. Those are the things that we tell you to do on a daily basis anyways. And now these are the things that aren't only going to grow your business, are also going to take you on a free vacation. So it's a win-win. You literally cannot lose. So we're going to give you guys our tips and tricks for exactly what we're doing. And as far as how we're making a plan, um, whether you're somebody that writes it on a piece of paper, or you put it on a post-it note, or you keep it in your phone, whatever it is, but looking at that point structure, understanding that point structure and getting to work to earn this trip. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to all give you our tips and tricks, what we are best at, um, and kind of go from there. So I don't know where we want to start. I guess maybe we can start with maybe PRV, which is if you look at the point structure, PRV is kind of the first thing you start with anyways. Um, so maybe we want to dive into PRV. Melissa, you want to take off? Yeah. And then anybody else that wants to jump in, any of the other superstar directors that are on that want to talk PRV, we are going to talk parties and fundraisers and all of the different aspects. But if you want to add something about PRV, please, please, please do. Um, and PRV. Okay. Um, here's the thing. So PRV is probably the easiest of all of the points that you can earn because you control it. You control it. Your Points that you get from PRV are not dependent on anybody else. They're not dependent on your team and how they perform. They're not dependent on um, your, your getting paid a title or not, which also means that you're reliant on your team. PRV, you can control. If you want to have 4,000 points a month coming from PRV, mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to have 4,000 points coming from PRV. That I mean, is, you, why not make it 5,000? Why not? Right. <laughs> Just up it. But, but realistically, like here, here's the thing. So when we, when you do the breakdown of figuring out how many points that you need, so let's say it is the 25,000 that you are aiming for 25,000 minus, is it the 
4,500, I don't have that breakdown in front of me. 4,500 needs to come from sponsoring. Yes, Anna, you're nodding. Okay, so you take that 2,500, right? And you deduct, or you take the 25,000, you deduct 4,500 that you need for sponsoring points. The rest of those points, if need be, could come from PRV. Mm -hmm. It could come from you and your sales. So if you take 20,000 divided by six, because that's basically you need 20,000 points of PRV at that point, divided by six months, you need $3,333 in PRV each month. Now, that is like worst case scenario. You're putting all of your eggs in your PRV basket. Nothing else is going to happen. None of your team members or frontline are going to promote. You're not going to get consistency or you're not going to get what well, that is like bottom line most that you would need if you only counted on the 4,500 sponsoring and the 20,500 from PRV. The whole point is your PRV is what you control. So now is the time where what? Oh my gosh, four, five days until it starts. I still have myself like in the middle of July. Oh, right. We I have know. five days. Uh oh. This is like being at the Oscars and they just started playing the music while I was giving my speech. Dude, I was muting people who came in and had noisy microphones. Anna Hughes. Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry. How rude. Melissa, she totally off the viking ship that was uh, legit kicking you off of the viking ship she absolutely just did right she absolutely did okay right so uh so so we have what was days, I saying? Five we have five days. days so this five days is when you diligently need to be looking at how you're going to front load your calendar for each month coming up if you are going to and by, by front load i mean you should always schedule the first 15 days of your month with concrete dates on your calendar so your part, your hostesses, get them to get them to host in the first 15 days of the month. You, you don't unless a hostess is adamant about um, hosting a party at the end of a month, unless they're adamant, because you'll never tell them no, get them to host all beginning to mid month so that if that party stays open, you still have the ability to close that party before the end of the month. You want your calendar front loaded for August 1st to August 15th, September 1st to September 15th, October 1st to October 15th. If you can crank out the majority of your PRV goal in the first 15 days of the month, before even scent and warmer of the month kit hits, before maybe some of your Scentsy Club subscribers hit, your bonus PRV will happen from the 15th through the 30th or 31st. Mm -hmm. PRV is not ever something to be lucky about. It's not something that you post and hope. Right. Post and hope is not going to get you on the incentive trip at all. Mm -hmm. You can't post and hope. You have to be you have to be diligent. Use your Amy for following up with customers. That's easy PRV. Use a mailing list if you have one to start communicating for the next six months with those customers that are on your mailing list. That means you might be spending on postage, but you're doing it for the six months during an incentive period where it matters. There is multiple things that you can do to, to outline where your PRV is going to come from. Remember, I, can, I can't say this enough. Your PRV is what you control. The PRV points that you get for the incentive trip are what you control. If you need to have 20,000 PRV points, then you need to break down how you're going to get that. That's 3,000 a month, a little less than, three, little, you need a little bit more than 3,000 a month. And some of you are thinking or saying, I've never sold 3,000 in a month ever. Okay. But we're not looking backwards. We're not looking back. We have an amazing catalog ahead of us. We have an amazing harvest collection coming up. We have an incredible holiday collection. And the success of those collections is based on how well you market, on how well you bring it to your customers. The LTOs too. Coming LTOs through. that yeah. are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Using all of the things that drop in your lap as PRV opportunities to your advantage. So I was telling my I, I was telling my girls last night. I said I am focusing on that first eight thousand points that I need from sponsoring, because PRV to me, number one, it comes easy. Number two, it's what I can control. Mm -hmm. 
So my first 8,000 points that I want to earn for this incentive is those sponsoring points. Mm -hmm. I don't want to wait until January to be rounding out my 8,000 points. I need them. I want them to be rounded out as fast as I possibly can mm -hmm. so that everything else that I do is a bonus. Everything else that happens is a bonus. Do you want to say anything about any, anything else about BRB? <laughs> Hi, everyone. And you, they want you to talk to them like you talk to oh, the whatever. animals. You did not just say that. She is in so much She's trouble. She's mad at you me for posting. Quit. My She's goodness mad. gracious. I said, but that's what the people want. You post what they want. They oh, want you. My heaven. No. Okay, so okay. this is so exciting. I love it when, it when it becomes a new fall incentive. And the fall season is upon us. And, I mean, I hate to even say it, but, like, School is going to be starting, like we're getting back into the routine of things. So you guys, adjust your calendars with the routine of life. Like this is so huge. Like like Melissa said, front load your calendar. Those first 15 days, get your 8,000 points right off, the right off the top. Like focus on getting those because that is such a huge thing because it is PRB we can control. We can push it at the very end when we're fighting for those points at the very end, whether it be in the top 75 or, you know, whatever, whatever cruise you want to do or try to do. Um, so it, I just think one thing that I love too in the fall is everyone loves the fall season. Everyone loves their house to smell good and spice and cinnamon. And like, I mean, just, it's just fall is in the air and it's such a great time to have Scentsy in people's homes. Um, I do a fall open house at my house. Um, this is uh, this is something else that if many of you don't do this, this is something that can get you out of your comfort zone to do and invite your friends and whoever, whatever you want to do, but have an open house at your house, have your samples, do a sample bar, do fun, you know, hot cider donuts. Like, I mean, just something simple, but it is always such a huge thing for me. And that is like, I always know that my PRV is going to be jump started there. And I can talk to people about the incentive. Like, hey, do you want to come on a cruise with me? Like, I, I get a lot of my recruits in the fall. It's always such a good time to speak. And my dog is scratching at the window. Thank you. That's part of living um, where I live. But anyways, so um, anyways, ADD, adult onset ADD. So that is what I would encourage you to do. Um, you know, like Melissa said, PRB we can control, but I want you to try to come out of your comfort zone in order to earn. You have got to come out of your comfort zone. You have got to become uncomfortable. You have got to become, you've got to try something new, whether it be if you've never done a fair show, whether it be you've never done an open house at your house or a basket party or a home party, even that, like you just never know anymore. Um, try something new because you never know what level it will take you to next. Like seriously, and such a good time to start at something new as well. PRV, PRV. Really okay, all right, go for it, Rach. Actually, I will pop pop in because with the same suit of PRV, I love to do fundraisers every year during the fall. Um, it's a perfect time. A lot of kids are looking for funds for sports, cheerleading, band. You can look for smaller organizations. I've done sp the Special Olympics, but my favorite fundraiser that I've ever done, and I've actually been doing it for five or six years now is my alma mater nursing school and they needed money for their pinning ceremony and they also use money for a scholarship for the first year students and those students work so hard and it's great to donate the money it's great to be able to get all of the contacts it's great to meet all of these new customers it's great for the tax write-off but guys it's great for the points because if you have a two or three or four or ten thousand dollar fundraiser that is two or three or four or ten thousand points so it's a great place to pick up a lot of points it's a great way to give back to your community um, and it's a great way to meet a lot of new contacts of people that you can be following up with for for future sales after the fundraiser, not just the fundraiser. And I can tell you for a fact, every single year that I've done that fundraiser with those nursing students, I've had a new team member out of that. Whether it's a person who's done a party following it or they just joined me right off the bat out of the fundraiser. Fundraisers are a fantastic way to meet new people, 
and rack up a lot of points just with your sales. So even though you're giving that money away, you're still benefiting in the process and you're still walking away with a lot of host rewards in the process too. So um, that's Good what I have to say that I that. know everybody's wondering this watching, how do you book those, those fundraisers? How do you find those organizations and how do you approach them? You just ask around. Honestly, when I first started doing fundraisers, one of the things that I did is I posted on Facebook, if you had $500 to give to the organization or group of your choice, who would you give it to and why? And that is it. Because a lot of people would pop in and say, oh, I would give it to this person or that person or this group or whatever it was. And that gave me a person to personally message and say, hey, this is what I have in mind. Can you help hook me up with whoever's in charge of that organization or whoever the band teacher is or whoever the cheer coach is or whatever, the student body president for the nursing association? That gives you an in with whoever is looking for that funding. And that's a great place to start. So that's that would be my advice to you if you don't know who to ask. Um, get in front of as many people as possible because going to a school and dropping off a packet is not going to sell you on a get, get you sold on a fundraiser. It's talking to people and getting them to understand what our product is and how it is a product that people are going to buy regardless. So they may just might, they may as well buy it from their fundraiser and that way they can benefit from it too. I love that. And really quick too, I know Erin Shifflett's here and she in the comments said a way that she booked a fundraiser. Erin, do you want to pop on so it's in the recording of how you booked your fundraisers, your three? Yeah, so um, we have a lot of fall, fall organization, fall events where people are looking for donations. So a couple different people have asked me to donate warmers and I donated them happily. But I also said, hey, like, let's also do a fundraiser. And because our fall catalog is coming out. So um, I just asked, like, let's just do simple fundraiser with basically just like a catalog party that basket party so and another thing is if you do when i didn't i don't actually donate warmers i donate gift certificates so they i might give them like a little something like a fragrance flower but i also do a gift certificate uh for a higher value amount so that the person who wins the gift the donation has to contact me so I have the customer's contact information and I also have a way to connect with them so don't ever donate something big give something small with a gift certificate so you actually can connect with the customer and just that's all I got and just be paying attention for that sort of thing. I know that sometimes I do smaller events and I overhear somebody at a table that has a bake sale and they're just trying to save some money for their dance team. And if you're paying attention for stuff like that, if you're looking for stuff like that, you may have heard of like recruiting goggles where you're like paying attention to people who could be joining your team. I feel like I live like that with fundraisers because I love fundraisers. Um, it just kind of fuels me and it's definitely put me on a lot of really great trips, including the top earning trips. So give fundraisers a try. Don't let it um, intimidate you. You can go on YouTube and find a lot of really great resources and videos from um, leaders within our community who are happy to share their experiences with you on that. I love that. And really quick too, I seen in there the chat, a lot of people are asking, they don't know how to do fundraisers. That's a different discussion for a different day. But if you go to YouTube, there's tons and tons. Um, Wendy Heath Newgast just posted a YouTube video with all her files and everything for the next season too. Um, so take that to YouTube. That's not a today thing. So we don't have two hours. So um, Jen, were you going to go? I can go. So first of all, you guys have to know I'm like the odd duck. I have, so I'm almost 13 years. I celebrate 13 years next month. And I have never planned out an incentive trip. But yeah, I've been fortunate enough to earn all of them. So I'm just like, first of all, you guys, we're going to be on a trip together and I can feel it. I feel like it's finally going to happen. We're actually going to hug. We're actually all going to go somewhere. And I couldn't be more ecstatic. But here's one of the biggest, the best, most ama amazing things Orville ever said to me. He said, incentives are built to build your business. And those might not be the exact words, but that's what I heard because I'm all about simplicity, those of you who know me. And that's what he said. And I was like, you know what? Like, so for me, I look at every month of every year is I'm trying to earn something. And what is it? I'm trying to earn my ticket to freedom. I'm trying to earn a better life for my family. I'm trying to earn a business to work on a business that I'm going to pass on to my family. So I don't personally just wait until August 1st to start all of this. I do as much as I can every single month. And I hope that you guys all know that 
it is possible to build the most amazing, lucrative business that you've ever dreamt of because many of us have done it and don't just use the incentive period to do it, but like where else can you work, work, where you are rewarded for doing your job with a cruise to Alaska or a top tier trip on wherever. So seriously, you guys, take all of the things that you learn on this call and implement them into your daily business. Make sure that everything you do is an income producing activity. Now, is it okay to do fun things? Because I am a a Melissa Gratz wannabe. I love crafting. I think it is so much fun, but you literally have to sit next to me and say, okay, Jen, take that marker and put the dot right there. Because if you don't tell me exactly where to put the dot, I have totally messed up the entire craft, but I love it. But I think that it's also important to know that we all have our strengths and we all have to do the things that keep us happy, but we all also have to do income producing activities. So if you're one of those people who focuses on super fun stuff, make sure you get those important things done first and then work on your, your super fun things. So the way I earn trips is, those of you who know me know that I'm, you already know what I'm gonna say, is the two year plan. So all the two year plan is sponsor two people, sell 2000 PRV, teach those two people to do the same thing, and you will earn the top level of every single trip, every single year. I promise you, sponsor two people, teach them to do what you do, and sell 2000 PRV. It's literally that simple. Also think, join host buy. We used to have buy host join written all over all of our marketing materials. Think join host buy because you don't really truly want anybody to just buy from you. You want them to join so that they can experience all of the amazing things that you get to experience. So you first want to offer them the business opportunity. And then if they aren't like, yeah, I'm going to do it right now, which we know is not usual. They don't usually just say, sure, I'll join right now. Then the next thing I say is, well, let's host a party. Let's do a party. I will host a, I will do a party for you no matter what kind of party you want to do. Maybe it's a fundraiser. Maybe it's a home party. Maybe it's a basket party, an event, whatever you want. I will do it for you. And then if you completely fail, I'm kind of kidding, but this is what I have put on myself. If I fail and they don't want to join and they don't want to host, then I let them write me that check or Venmo me or PayPal me. So what I do do at the beginning of every month or every incentive period is I sit down and I go through my workstation. I start with the last three months and I look at who has purchased from me in the last three months. And those are the first people that I contact. I say, okay, listen, our brand new catalog has come out August 1st. So in my head, I always know why every single month of every single year is the best month to join Sensi because it's true. Every single month of every single year is the best month to join. So why was this month or is this month still the best month ever to join? You guys already know you get the bonus kit, you get 10% off, you get to like sign people up for Scentsy Club. Like there are so many incredible reasons why I would never tell anybody to wait to join until August 1st. But then come August 1st, I've got to regroup, revamp. I have to think, okay, why is August the best month ever? Well, that's dumb. It's so obvious and so easy as to why August is going to be our best month ever to become a Sensi consultant. And I won't, I won't keep talking about that, but you guys all completely understand. Like every single month is a great month to become a consultant. It's up to you to share the value and why that month is so incredible. So again, I start with the first three months. I contact every, every single person. And depending on how I know them, how long I've known them, I either ask them to host or join. I have kind of shifted toward more asking people to host. And then of course I try to flip. I never contact my customers and ask them to buy from me because I want them to host something. And that's another thing that I do is I challenge myself at the beginning. Honestly, I kind of use it every six months or every incentive period to diversify my business because the more, more diversified I personally am, the more diversified my team is because I'm gonna share every single thing that I'm doing. So I challenge myself to book two home parties when you can do that. I know that we can't all do home parties right now to book two basket parties, to book two events, to book two fundraisers and to do two online parties. I didn't do an online party until 
um, March of 2000. Never had I ever done an online party. And you guys, it's so crazy. I am still doing online parties this month. And I am not saying this to brag at all, but I have, I'm going to end at about 4,500 PRV because I couldn't get people to wait until August to do more parties because I wanted to flip them. But again, I already said to you that I try to, I try to keep, I don't ever say no to anyone, but the, it's it, partying is where it's at. I built my business on parties. When the pandemic hit, I was stressed out. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a home party girl. What is going to happen to my business? Thank the Lord for Rachel and Heather and Anna and Melissa and all the people that helped me and mentored me on how the heck I get online and do a party. I am so incredibly thankful. So anyway, that my list that I start on August 1st is the last three months are the first people on my list. My hostesses are number one. Those are the first people that I contact and I say, oh my gosh, have you seen the new catalog? You guys all know what to say. After I've done that, I go to six months, nine months and the last year. Then I take a highlighter and I literally go through and I highlight all of the hostesses for the last year. And those are the first people that I invite to host in hopes of flipping their party. Then, I have a dream team list that I keep going all the time. Those people where I always have notes and I, you guys haven't started that. Go get yourself a spiral notebook right on the front. My dream team list. This is going to be your new notebook that you're going to carry around with you forever and ever. 10 years from now, you're going to say, oh my gosh, look how long I've been carrying this around because you're going to write a date at the top. Anytime you have a sponsoring conversation with someone, you write their name down in that notebook and it's organized and you keep it. Well, it's not organized because when Susie Smith comes to you and you haven't talked to her in three years, you got to flip through. So if anybody ever comes up with a better method, it would be very helpful to me because I have to like literally go through lots of pages and try to find people. But my dream team list is the second thing that I always go to and I just start messaging everyone. New catalogs coming out. Would you like a copy? Can I set you up with a, I am still the dinosaur that says I'd love to do, a, I should say event probably, but I still say party and it still works for me for some strange reason. So that's the other thing is, just because you learn something from one person or the next person, my way is not the right way. Nobody's way is the right way. You do what works for you. Um, what else? I And my club members. Those are the next people that I go to are my club members. And I offer them the opportunity to host a party with me of some type, whether it's a basket party, a home party, an event. Do they know of somebody who needs a fundraiser? Any of that. So I just make that list and I literally have it all written down. I've got my highlighter and as I contact them, and it's honestly, it's just about being organized and reaching out to people. Because if you're not sponsoring enough people or if you're not booking enough parties, it's because you're not talking to enough people. Because there are millions of people out there that want to earn free Sensi, that want a better lives for themselves, that want to make an extra income. You just have to talk to them. And if you, so if you, Talk to your, if you decide that you'll speak to at least five people a day about the opportunity or hosting, and I always turn the hosting into the business opportunity, you guys, you will build an amazingly successful business and you will easily earn any trip that you want always. So I'll stop there because I've talked way too long, but you guys, I'm super excited and I hope that I know that. Every one of you is so incredibly capable of doing this. Don't think that, don't let your circumstances define you. Don't let anything that is in your past dictate whether or not you are capable of doing something like this. Like you guys, you can all or do anything you want. Whether you think you can or can't, you are absolutely right. I'll leave it there. Okay. I love that. Every time that Jen speaks, I absolutely love it. Where'd Melissa go? Is she on here? Did she fall off? Um, but I wanted to add just a little bit. I don't know if Melissa wants to pop on. I know something she said she want to talk about, but I don't see her anymore. Um, but, um, I wanted to pop on really quick and give my little perspective on exactly what J Jen just said. Um, and kind of running on it a little bit is every single person that ever asks me about anything that they want to purchase. Oh my gosh. I love that warmer. I want to order it. I want to order this. I want to order that, whatever else. How much is that? I never even mention the price before I offer them to earn it for free because, and I just tell them flat out, the best way to buy Sensi is through hosting a party because that's the way that you're going to get it free and half price. So every single customer that asks to order, you need to be offering a party. And then as we've all said, and that you've heard in everything is you offer the party and then you flip them. 
So I want to talk to you guys about sponsoring because sponsoring is personally how I earn the majority of my trips. Um, every top level incentive trip I earned was I, the year that I earned it, I did not earn annual sales, if that makes sense. So it's proof that the majority of the trips that I've earned, every top 100 trip, every, every trip that's like that, I did not earn annual sales that year um, because the majority of my points come from sponsoring. For me, they're the bread and butter of my incentive point structure. Um, and they're where I am fairly confident every time that my incentive, that I can gain a lot of points from. And this year, you guys, if you have not read through and broke down and memorized the incentive point structure, you'll see we have the opportunity to earn even more incentive points this year because than in the past couple of years, because now we get a thousand points off of not only our new, our newly recruited, newly certified people, but all of our frontline newly promoted leads, all of our frontline newly promoted stars, and then now all of our newly promoted frontline superstar consultants and director consultants. That's a crap ton of stinking points, a ton of points, a, a ridiculous amount of points. Because you got to think, if you're bringing in one person and you're pushing those them for at least sensational start level two, they'll pretty much be a lead consultant right there. So you're getting 2000 incentive points just from them coming on and promoting from certified to lead through that sensational start level where they're getting $125 credit credit from getting there. So I'm always pushing my people using the tools that Sensi is giving me to push them to that next level, using that sensational start levels and that product credit to dangle in front of their face because it's huge. When you're first coming in as a consultant, who, why wouldn't you want $125 in product credit or $225 in product credit, whatever it is. So use those sensational start levels when you're sponsoring people. And I know I've seen in the comments and I know I hear all the time, I can't get anybody to join. Just like Jen said, if you're struggling to sponsor people, you're not talking to enough people. And I know I saw somebody in the comments say, I can easily get 2000 PRV, but I can't sponsor to save my life. Well, your 2000 PRV, I can almost guarantee is coming from the same relatively small well of people. You need to branch off like a spider web from that well that you have. So this is the point. If you feel like you can't sponsor anybody, but you're doing well on PRV, one, you need to be offering the opportunity to your best customers. And I know at the beginning, it almost sounds backwards because you're making 25% or 30% off of a customer opposed to 2% off of, you know, your frontline if you're a lead consultant. I know it seems backwards, but I promise you long term, it's the best thing you're ever going to do. Because off of a customer, they're going to make one purchase every few months, typically, other than every once in a while when we get those great customers that purchase twice a month, you know, but typically you're going to have a customer in place to purchase once every few months. If you can bring in downline, well, frontline, and they're actually working their business, you're going to see a profit from them working their business every single month. Okay. Every single month no matter what, without approaching them about a sale, without, you know, you know, telling them about a, you know, a special or an LTO, whatever else. Um, and I see people saying they need an active downline. Uh Oh, sorry. Drop my phone. See people saying they need an active downline. Where's my picture? There I am. Um, but again, like I said, if you're struggling to do that, then you've got to grow your network. You've got to figure out a way, whether you're going to do it through social media, whether you're going to do it through parties, whether you're going to do it through fundraising, you need to meet more people. You need to get in front of more people. You need to be having more conversations. And when I'm saying conversations, I'm not saying sensey conversations. I'm saying, instead of sitting in your car at football practice next week, go sit with the moms at football practice. It might be uncomfortable. You might feel very nervous the first time asking if you can sit with them, but I promise you it's the best decision you're ever going to make. And if you can think like that every single time you go anywhere, whether I, I remember Jen Audette told me once and every time I do a training, I use a Jen Audette quote, but I, Jen told me one time, instead of going through the drive through at Starbucks, you go into Starbucks so that you can have a conversation with that barista. You can sit down at a table and maybe meet somebody you wouldn't have met through the drive through but going and making yourself uncomfortable and putting yourself with other people, go into the bank, sit with the moms at practice when you're, you know, whatever it is, there's all these opportunities where you can meet more people in person. But like I said, that's not just the beginning. You've also got fundraisers where you're going to get contact information for people you never would have met otherwise. There's also social media that you can meet people you never would have met otherwise whether you're doing it through Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is. And that's another training for another day, but getting on those social media platforms and expanding your network, hitting that when you're, when it pops up on Facebook, people, you may know, get on there and friend request them. Friend request the people that you have links with people that, you know, might be your sister's best friend or your cousin's husband, husband, which maybe, yeah, whatever, whatever it is, any situation that you might have one connector with, 
and if, friend request them, build a relationship with them. I'm not saying reach out to them and say, do you want to buy Cincy right now? But I'm saying add them on Facebook, start liking their kids, their posts of their kids. Oh my gosh, your kid's so cute. All of those things to where eventually you show up on their timeline and they find something that they want to buy because it happens more often than you would ever guess. So expanding your network. And again, at parties, 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 parties. I have the same exact mentality as Jen does about parties. They're the first thing that I'm doing when I'm going in and I'm planning my incentive is finding people to take host kits, finding people to earn their kits and finding parties so that I have all of these parties coming in August 1st. And it's not just for that immediate PRV. The reason why I'm starting out doing parties at the very beginning of an incentive isn't for that immediate PRV right there, right there or even that immediate flip of that party. It's for the spider web that I know is going to come from that party. I want everybody to know, I know to have a party to where even if my sister had a party, there's going to be someone there that I don't know. There's going to be at least one person that I don't personally know at her party, whether it's online or in person. And then I want that person to have a party at that party. I'm probably not going to know anybody. And I get to that party and I meet their friends and here's all these new links of the spider web. Okay. And then I want one of those people to have a party. And then I meet all their contacts. And that is one way that you can grow your network consistently all the time is by doing it over and over again, every single month, um, super consistently. So sponsor, sponsor, sponsor. That's the way that I know I'm going to earn the majority of this trip because I've already decided that's what I'm doing. I already know what I'm, how many people I in. Oh, and one other tip about the sponsoring part and those, those frontline promotion points is run the report, get on your workstation hit your leadership report. So in case you don't know, because somebody at my retreat last weekend didn't know this, hit your leadership report, go to your settings, level where it says level, low and high or whatever it says, hit one and one and run the report. That is going to be your entire frontline so that you can see all of your frontline and you can go through that list, print that list off, get a highlighter that's got get five different color highlighters, highlight who has the, uh, who can be certified, who can be lead, who can be star, who can be superstar and who can be director, reach out to them. Hey, you did so good last month. I totally think that you can hit star consultant next month. Let's make a plan to help you push for it. Doing that to all of those people, is going to give you those extra points. So going through and making a plan with them. And like I said, I, you didn't, I didn't, when I send that message, I'm not saying, Hey, I really want you to get a thousand points. So I can, you know, I really want you to promote so I get a thousand points. Never make it about them. Your blessing lives is what we're doing in Sensi. So reaching out to them and saying, I think that you can do this. You're going to get 2,500 points to promote to Star Consultants to help you earn this incentive. Make it about them because at the end of the day, it is about them because we're arrows out, remember? And you just get the extra bonus of incentive points from them promoting. So that's my sponsorship spiel. Does anyone else have anything to add? Cumulative. I was just going to say those are cumulative. So if you have somebody who joins you August 1st and they promote to certified and they promote to lead and they promote to star, remember you have six months to do this. You're getting a thousand points for each of those promotions that you help them achieve. So it's not just a one-time deal of the thousand points. If somebody promotes to star consultant that's joined you up from August 1st and on, that's worth 3000 points for you. So she's right. Sponsoring is a huge place to rack up a lot of points. That's all. <laughs> so uh, maybe we should just kind of really quickly talk about the compensation or not the compensation plan, the, the breakdown for points and not getting discouraged when you get a little bit behind, but rather than getting discouraged, just altering your plan a little bit, pivot and proceed rather than throw in the towel because you just never know how the rest of the period will go. I've seen people who have taken their foot off of the gas in October or November feeling like I'm not, I'm not going to make it, who if they kept going really could have pulled it off. So Rachel, I know you know the points inside and out. <laughs> I do. That's one thing that I do. And for example, the people that were at my retreat this weekend, I, as soon as I found out where that incentive was, I sat down and I, I, every, I didn't go eat lunch. I didn't go take a break. I didn't go get a drink. I literally, the minute I found out, sat down and started reaching out to people about joining and about earning their kit and about hosting parties. Um, so I obsess a little bit about the point structure. Um, so if you do not know, the uh, different levels, there's three different levels. Level one 
is SFR registration. Um, if you do not know, that's just SFR registration. That's not your room in stay. That's not anything else. It's your registration. Um, that requires 18,000 points, no sponsoring points. Um, so you can earn that strictly off of your PRV. The second level is 25,000 points accumulative, 4,500 sponsoring points. That earns the full blown trip for one. And then you've got level three, which is 45,000 points total, 8,000 sponsoring points, and that earns a full-blown trip for level two. And there's a ton of points to be had. Your grow with the flow or whatever they called it this year. We all know what I'm talking about. Keep going, keep growing, whatever it was thing. They could have just, just kept grow with the flow, but it's fine. Um, those, you're getting 3,000 points. That's sponsoring points this year, guys. So if you earned level three, that's 3,000 points that you can take right off the top of that 8,000 you need for level two. Okay. So that knocks that down huge, which they've never done that. Normally they split it. So this is huge for people that might've struggled to earn the incentive off of sponsoring points before. Um, you've got all those different levels of, you know, you've got your, your 500 to 3000, depending on where you hit with grow with the flow. Um, you get one point for every PRV point. You get, um, 2,500 for a consistent PRV, which is at least a thousand five out of six months of the incentive. Um, and then you get anywhere from a thousand to 10,000 points, personal promotion points, whether whatever level you're hitting, obviously a thousand for certified 10,000 for super show director and everything else lands somewhere in between. Um, and then you're getting those paid at title points, which also are anywhere between, I can't remember what lead is. Um, but so I might be 500, maybe up to 2,500, um, personal front, uh, personal, I paid at title points. Sorry, guys. Um, so you get those every month. So there is a plethora of places for your points to come from. You just got to make a plan and you got to stick with it. And just like Anna said, when things get hard, when maybe something hasn't panned out the way that you had planned, maybe you weren't paid at paid at rank, not title. Yeah, but paid at rank. When If you were maybe not paid at rank one month, you know, maybe you thought you would get paid as a director and you actually got paid as a superstar consultant, whatever it is. You have got to look at it as a detour and not a roadblock, okay? You go around it. You find another way to get to your destination, opposed to just standing there or turning around. You go around it. You find a different road. You find a different path. Whatever you have to do to get there, you cannot give up and you have to keep moving forward. Everybody in here has the possibility to earn an incentive. My first incentive, I was six months in, had no idea what the heck I was doing and was a star consultant. Okay. Nobody in here has any reason why they can't earn this, whether you are a certified, a star or a superstar director, it doesn't make a difference. Everybody has the possibility. It's you. It's just doing it, just getting up and saying, this is what I'm doing. And this is the way I'm going to do it. Somebody unmute on purpose. I didn't see anything, but I was going to ask Jill if she had any input or Aaron. I will Aaron. say something about um, that is that I cannot, I mean, after 14 years, I cannot tell you how often I have sat with consultants like in December or like mid-December and they say to themselves or even January, like, I wish I just had one more month or if I just had two more weeks or, and so don't, don't wait, don't wait until your kids go back to school or after Labor Day, like start yesterday. Don't make your plan now. Um, give it the time now because you don't want to be short time, which is what happens all the time to consultants. They're like, I just needed two more weeks. I needed two more weeks of solid dedication. So, um, and then the one thing I wanted to say when Jen was talking about parties and um, talk, calling them events, I stopped calling my parties parties, even though I like, like Jen built my business on home parties and events. And I always just say, Hey, do you want to have some friends over? You want to have some friends over. I never, ever say party. And I book a gazillion parties. I definitely have a home party business. And um, I've already started booking my parties for the fall. And I'm having, it's like low hanging fruit time right now. For some reason, I think it's because everybody's been locked up. But I, I want you guys to really push out outside of your comfort zone and book those home gatherings, home parties, get your friends together kind of a thing. Because it's really easy right now. So COVID's, be, COVID's gone, get your friends together and start early so that you have plenty of time to earn the incentive. But thanks everybody for organizing this. This has been great. Hey, can I jump in really quick? Can you, oh, Jill, after you, go. I was, mine's real quick. I was just gonna say like, 
you know, it doesn't matter how many of these we've earned or how many times I get on a call like this, everyone just gets me so much more excited every single year. And I think I said this on our last week's team meeting, don't think of it as it's way too many points or I've never, I think someone said it earlier, I've never done that much. Like Melissa said, we're not looking backwards. This summer wasn't a great summer for me at all, but it's time to start fresh. I've been organizing my office, going through all the customers. Like Jen said, pull that contact list, see what customers have ordered the last three months, and then take a look at even the customers that have ordered after that three months, six months, even a year. For the people that haven't ordered for the year, I'm not writing them off. We had COVID, everything was a year. I did a cute like letter, newsletter type thing that I'm slipping in just their scratch and sniff stickers. I'm sending every, I'm sending one of those to everyone, wishing them like a happy no COVID season and we're starting off fresh and just don't write them off because they haven't heard from you in a year. And don't, and a lot of people ask me, what do I say to the customers that I haven't reached out to because I've had them been slacking off? Send them a little postcard, send them a little letter, touch base right now is the best time to get organized because if we have a new catalog and you have the ability to say, we have a new catalog and we have this amazing air purifier and all this new stuff coming out. Do you want a showcase brochure? And if you order in the next whatever, then I'll send you a set of samples and we'll set you up a link. Like, don't write all those people off if you've slacked off. I've heard even earlier today, we were on with Jen and, and you know, some people checked out for the summer or took a break, like you're going forward. So just think to yourself, get out your plan. You're on this call. You're starting fresh. Get your office organized. Do whatever you need to do. Um, I talked to someone the other day. It was actually a doctor. And I said, should I do this? And he said, do opposite of what you've done if you don't like where you've been. I was like, well, that's very good advice. Like, you don't have to ask me the question. Should I do this? Should I do that? If what you've done isn't got you where you want it to be this summer, then it's time to do something different. So just let this be the, the springboard, this call to get started and pull that contact sheet and get organized and get your Amy out. Amy's the easiest thing ever. I don't care what follow-up system you have, you, you guys have, just choose something. And if you have nothing, then Amy is by far the easiest one to get going on and get your contacts in order. I was doing basic stuff, stuff that like going into my contact, merging all the contacts together, making sure they're all subscribed to the to the newsletter list. Like contact and follow up and touching base with these people are single handedly the best way to start having those conversations. And you can even say, guys, hey, I was kind of checked out this summer. I just want to check in with you and see how your stash is going. It's still ten percent off. Like, or let's get you on the books for the new fall catalog. And like Aaron said, let's get a get together so you guys so you can sniff all the new scents. So. I oftentimes will take the take it, take the heat for not being the best consultant that I should be and saying, look, I, I checked out a little bit, but it's a new catalog and you need to smell this stuff. So um, it's, it's, I love August 1st. It's a clean slate. And so like Melissa said, don't look backward, just look forward. You guys can all do this. Was there somebody that wanted to talk after Jill? Okay, cut me off if so, or put it in the chat. I love what... Edie just said, <clears throat> um, where she said, focus on what you want. And it's so easy for us to be distracted by everything in our peripheral vision. It is so easy to be distracted. And I'll tell you, just in sitting um, and while I was listening, like I'm mapping out my road. I didn't do it the moment it was announced like Rachel, <laughs> but um, it's non-negotiable. I will be earning it. But let me tell you, hope is not a business plan. And so I can't hope that I will be earning the trip and I can't hope that the PRV will come and I can't hope that consultants certify for me and I can't hope that I sponsor people and I expand my network and that I host parties because without a roadmap, everything's just in my head and it's really easy when you don't have something written down to let it go, to forget about it or to let yourself down. So here's what I did, just to give you an idea, just for my own personal breakdown, because I like to take a really big thing and break it into really small bite-sized chunks. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> I figured out that I want personally 21,000 PRV points for this trip. So that's a big number, okay? But the way that you break that down into bite-sized chunks is I divided it by six months. And so that 21,000 divided by six months is like 3,500 a month that I need in sales. That's still kind of a big number. So I broke it down even further and divided that 21,000 by 180 days. 
I need roughly $117 a day in sales to hit my goal. Now, does that still seem scary? It's not as scary as $3,500 a month, and it's certainly not as scary as 21,000 PRV points by the end of the incentive. But here's what I'm going to do. And this is what I do. Anytime I have a PRV goal that I break down to a daily goal, I go on to, um, I think it's timeanddate.com or freecalendars.com or whatever. And I print six months of calendars for free. And they're very boring. They're black and white. And it's just a calendar. But I go and I write and I will be doing this, $117 on each day in that calendar from the time the incentive starts to the time the incentive ends. Because then all I have to focus on is what that number says per day. And then I will track it. And if I sell 176 in a day, that's what'll go in my block. So it'll say 117 at the top and in that same block below it, it'll say 176. And if the next day I only sell 86, then I start to figure out where my difference is, right? Now, I'm not a mathematician. I'm not Anna. I can't do math in my sleep. But, but I will tell you that I do try to figure out my over under because hope is not a business plan. I refuse to get to January 15th or it ends January 31st this year, right? right yeah. Okay. <laughs> we are in a new camp. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I'm not going to get to January 15th when people are exhausted from the holidays and paying their credit card bills from the holidays and hoping to get $5,600 in PRV in the last 15 days of the month. That's not to be, that's not to say it hasn't been done. It's been done by multiple people many times. I just prefer to not spend the incentive period stressed out. So I am going to try to build as much as I possibly can point wise into the front half of this incentive. So you have to write down what your roadmap looks like. For me, I've written down what my PRV goal is, my, any opportunity that I have to get consistency points, any opportunity that I have to get paid at title points, and any, I know for a fact I need 8,000 in sponsoring points to earn the trip for two. So that's not negotiable. I know that I need those. And so when I take all of that, remember, PRV is what you control. So if you have your, if I get paid a title, I'll have this much. And if I'm consistent with my PRV, I'll have this much. And I need this much for sponsoring. Whatever the difference in that is, you can make up in PRV. And don't sell yourself short. If you've never earned an incentive before, don't settle on the 18,000 points. Don't think that it's just us that go on incentives. I met Rachel Pence in Africa and a top 100 trip. And she started the incentive period as a certified consultant and promoted to director during that incentive yeah. period, was on a top 100 trip. So I'm going to tell you right now, there are people that have done it and you can do it too. If you never earned before, you have the opportunity to earn. Second thing I want to say that I forgot to mention when I was talking earlier is when you go into reporting on your workstation and you click on sales reports or sales reporting, and then you go into that tab, there is a customer purchase history report that you can run for a certain date range. I just ran mine this afternoon. I ran it from July 1st of 2020 to July today, whatever today is. Uh, I don't know. I'm on farm time. All I know is that the roosters wake up really early, but um but anyway, I ran it and Jen kind of talked about this too. Like first she goes back, um, you know, 30 days or 60 days and then 90 days all the way, three, three months, right? So, but it's the same thing. And you're going to see a common thread with all of us. We're not earning the trips because we are hoping to earn the trips. We aren't building businesses because we're hoping to build businesses. We're doing it because it does take planning and it does take diligence and it does take persistence and it does take consistency. And it takes you saying, I'm good enough and I can do this. I can do this because I can be there with them. I want to run with those dogs and I can, but it's on me. It's on me to do it. So I ran my report today going back one year, that customer history, and it lists all your customers that have purchased in the last 12 months. And there are some people that stand out like sore thumbs on my list because they've ordered from me so many times. I need to approach them with a host kit this fall. 
and give them, not, not just offer them the opportunity for a host kit, but show them in the last 12 months, you have spent $776 with me. There is no reason you are not paying yourself to do this. Make them see why they need it. It's all in how you offer and it's all in how you ask. But you can't offer and ask blindly. The more information you have to support why you're offering and asking, the better your result is going to be. So use that customer sales history report as a tool. What? Mic drop. <laughs> use, that, use that customer history as just another tool. It's just another tool to help you be successful. I'm going to mic drop and be quiet. And so anybody else that wants to talk, by all means. I was going to say, please don't stop. <laughs> You're firing me up. So it's pretty amazing. If there are any of you here that feel like you look at these incentives and you think that's not for someone like me, that's not for, you know, I'm, I haven't been here long enough. I don't have a big enough business. I can't tell you enough that you're wrong because I felt the exact same way too. When I joined Sensi, I was a certified consultant for two years. I had no team. I had no desire to really build a business. Um, my circumstances changed and I did decide to, to grow, but for years, I looked at those things and I said, that's not for people like me. That's only for people at the top. And you couldn't be more wrong because it's the process of earning these trips that take you to the top. I'm here now because I was trying to earn trips, guys. I didn't, earn, I, I didn't try to make it to the top and get trips. I was chasing the trips and this is what I got in return. You know, one of the fun things that Orville says is, you know, you think about all of these people who work their nine to five jobs or their, their regular careers, and they work so hard for so long to get enough money to be able to take a vacation that's not even as magical as the ones that Sensi's put on. And we get to work really, really, really hard and make all of that money. And instead of spending it on a trip, we get rewarded with a free trip and we keep the money. Like, how freaking cool is that? It's pretty cool. It's a pretty amazing place to be. But I'm telling you that you're not going to do it until you start believing in, your, believing in yourself and that you are worthy and that you can do it. And, and then you'll walk away with all of these amazing things that the rest of us have. So keep pushing, keep working, keep believing in yourself. And traveling with Sensi, even if maybe you live in Seattle and you went on an Alaskan trip or whatever, traveling with Sensi is an entirely different beast. This is something that is not normal. It's something that you cannot replicate that normal people just can't do. And even if it, maybe you're not super excited about, which I don't know why you wouldn't be, but just in case there's always somebody that doesn't want to do that trip. Remember, this is going to be a different beast than anything that you or I could plan. Um, and just go for it. And whether you're, and I'm going to kind of say the thing that probably a lot, some people have on their mind, there's things that I know people are nervous about as far as this trip. Remember, we don't know what the year, will, what the world's going to look like a year from now. And there are lots of people a year ago that didn't try for Disney because of certain circumstances and certain things. And then we went to Disney in June and had the time of our lives and things that we could have never done without Sensi. And all I can think about are those people that last fall thought, I'm not even going to try to earn this because I don't want to wear a mask or because COVID or whatever. And then the next June came around and we had the time of our lives in Disney. So don't overthink anything that you, you know, I, I'm not even going to say the words, but anything that you could be afraid of because you don't know what the years the world's going to be like a year from now. You don't, you, you don't know. So go, go, go. And, you know, let all those fears go away of the possibilities or the what ifs, um, or that you're not good enough because you are. Um, and we want to see you there. It'd be funner with you there. So anybody else have anything to add? I was going to say Callie texted me and she had a good point. So, you know, <laughs> she, no. Okay. Anybody else? Callie's not going to say it. Yeah. You're not going to say it for her or she's Callie, not going to say it. What the heck? Oh, I, I'm, I misread it. She's, oh, oh she's, she's just telling you that. She's being a squatter tonight because her team told her to work smarter, not harder. So, so she's listening. <laughs> but she still participated in the chat and gave advice. If you scroll all the way up, she's yes. yeah. I did see that. Um, Guys, Emily's here. Anybody else? I think what one thing, and I'm sorry if the printer's going off in the back, but I would just say too is when you guys are talking to your teams, you see a lot of us that have been doing this 
every single year and we just get just as excited as we did the first one that we were there. Not the first one. The very first one, I was probably like some of you. And I sat there and said, those aren't for me. I'll never earn one of those. Like those are for the other people. Cause I was still the girl that wasn't really going to sell and wasn't going to build a team and wasn't one of those people. So you, if you guys are on this call, I'm assuming that you've already told yourself you can do this. You're just here to find strategies. You've got to take this excitement and this passion and even that all of us get, and you've got to put it out to your teams and put it out to the people that you're, you're wanting to bring on board because 12, 13, 14, six, seven, however many years we've been doing this every single year that they announce this, we get just as excited and we get excited for all of you because there's nothing more fun for me. And I know for them than seeing new people earn this trip and actually going, wow, I did it. And that's what you want to give to other people. So you've got to be passionate in talking about this, talking about Sensi. I think it's one of the reasons that people jump from a little bit of success to a lot is they stay excited. They stay excited. I get just as excited when that UPS guy comes to the door as I did the first day I joined when my starter kit came. And my customers feel that and my team feels that. And that's what you guys need to put out into the universe, put out to your teams, let people know, even if, even if you're slightly thinking, I don't know if I can do this, you help your team believe that they can too and show them the way. And this call will be recorded and you let every single one of them watch this because that's how you make it happen is the minute you start seeing little baby steps. I remember when I hit certified, I was like, wow, I can actually do this. It's just sharing fragrance. Like it's that simple. You guys, what's going to sell the fragrance is your excitement about it truly. And that's how your teams are going to get excited about this incentive trip. So I have one more little story that I want to share. And it's a woman that's sitting right next to Melissa Gratz in the pink shirt. And her name is AD Mitchell, for those of you who don't know. And I want to tell you a story about when I first started Sensi. So I was desperate to make money. I'm going to talk a little bit about money and please insert the income disclosure wherever you need to insert if somebody posts this video somewhere. But my sponsor was Becca Levi. And I was really desperate for money. Never in a million years did I think that Sensi, my heart is like pounding. It's like, this is clearly very emotional for me. Um, I was never in a million years, you guys, did I ever think I would be where I am today. But I want you to know that Becca Levi said to me right when I joined, because she felt something in me and I felt it in her and I trusted her and I believed her. And I just followed what she said, which was basically, don't do anything else. Don't focus on anything else. Don't worry about anything except for sponsoring and selling. Do those two simple things. And she said to me, I went to a meeting once and there was this cute girl standing there and she was talking and she was like just the coolest person ever. And she was crying and saying, I made a $10,000 paycheck in one month. And this is, I mean, I joined in 2008. So this is before that. And I, I'm not even going to go on and on and on and bore you guys with so many details, but you guys, A.D. Mitchell that's on this call right now is one of the most impactful people in my personal business because she showed me that it's possible. She showed me that you can make great money. She actually was that first person that showed me that I could retire from my six figure income job and support my family and do all the things I want and be happy, be kind, be in a place where I don't have to get involved in all the junk because I feel like 80 doesn't get involved in, as a matter of fact, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure she's the first shining star. Am I right? Third, close enough to the first, third shining star ever. And like, you guys, this woman is so incredible and not so if I've had any impact on your life, not that I've had impact on your life, but I know a couple people on this call I have, and it's honestly so much of it stems down from the top from those people that work their butts off. Like the fact that 80 is still earning these trips, the fact that people can make the kind of money that they want, but still love this so much. You guys have to understand that the opportunity with this company is more than you can ever imagine. If you think for five seconds that you aren't capable, you're crazy because you don't have to. I don't care if you didn't make it through middle school, if you didn't make it through anything like you can start tomorrow and you can decide to change your circumstances, change everything for your family 
put your head down and work hard. I wrote earlier in the comments something that I learned from Terry Levi about taking massive action. You guys, we seriously all deserve massive success. What you do with that success is up to you. And I feel like so many of us are into giving and going back to 80, there probably isn't a more giving person in the world. I bet Melissa might agree. Like literally yeah. 80 has just made such an impact on my life. And I just feel like um, it's on my heart. I have to say this because I never get to like share with her so much, but what an impact she's made on me. But anyway, we all deserve such success. Do good things, stay out of the junk, work hard, share the opportunity, tell people that they're worth it, share your compliments. Don't just say you should join Sensi, say, I think you'd be really great at this because blah, 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 tell them why. Like you can find something fantastic about everybody. And honestly, if you ever really wanna feel great about it, well, and I mean, Melissa, you're the exact same way. I mean, do you have those people that every time you talk to them, you just feel like a million dollars? Like some people have that gift and there's both AD and Melissa just happen to be sitting <laughs> The same because they are both the kind of people that make me feel like I'm just so special. But honestly, that's what it's all about. Make a difference. It's not about points. Go out there and share this opportunity and build this business because we have something amazing. We have something that no other company has. Go or do it. Do what you're supposed to do. And a trip is your little fun bonus. We will all go on the trip together. But anyway, I'm sorry. I know I'm just rambling Wait. about but you're fine you're fine but i want to talk i want to say three things yeah. okay yeah. all right so number one is jen people were saying the same thing you were saying about 80 about you in the chat so that's number one number two is that jp wants to say something to you 80. and i think since it's 80's birthday tomorrow oh we should allow people to say what they want to say no, to her about oh a million percent Number three, I want to ask you a question. Did you ever think in a million years you'd be sitting here this many years later that Sensi would have been the vehicle to the best life ever for you? Not, not ever. It is such a dream. It's such a dream. And I, and I get to, I get to live it every day. And that's what I love to do is just share it with everyone to know that everyone is capable of dreaming big and having those special things that you're passionate about and that you want to share and we learn so much in this in this business to share and to give and I could not imagine my life without it at all and so it's it is such a blessing and I'm just so I'm just humbled I just don't even know what to say I'm my eyes are completely red and crying and you guys said way too many nice things I'm like oh my gosh that is like such a good birthday <laughs> We're going to have to get a copy of the chat. I'll get oh. it from Anna and Rachel. We need to get, <laughs> where are you all dressed up? Oh, no, she got, oh, she dyed her hair. Oh, That's perfect. Okay. okay. <laughs> Not my mirrors, right? Okay, good. Uh, we'll get a copy of this chat because everybody's saying some really great things about oh, you. And so nice. we'll get that. Thank but um, but <laughs> it's really cool to see, I mean, 80 joined in when? 06. Yeah, I just. And you joined in? Years. In 07. Yeah. And they have what? What's your ID number? Eight nine two. What's your ID number? Three two four. And they're still here. <laughs> and they're still and here. We still earn trips. <laughs> and they still earn trips. Top every, earner. Every top year. earner. We, we have to earn them. Like it's not even a question. No. You know. And is it is it easier to earn the trip because you're a superstar no. director? No. Absolutely no. Not. No. Because no. we don't get promotion points anymore. <laughs> that's that's my ID from... story. That's my ID story. Actually, is that when I went hey. to the camp. Um, I went to boot camp and there was all these superstar directors and there's this hilarious, crazy lady, A.D. Mitchell, telling all these stories and I'll, I'll never forget. And I was like, oh, you're a superstar director. You must, I'll never forget where we were standing and everything. And I said, oh, you must automatically get the trips. And she said, uh, no, absolutely not. You have to work harder. I don't get any more promotions. You have to work harder than ever as a superstar director. And I was like, I have never forgotten that. That was in <laughs> 09 in Boise, Idaho, in this little room. And I've never forgotten it. It was <laughs> when she told me she was pregnant with Marin. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. JP, that is so true. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and now she's 11. Listen, Stop it. We're, and just dyed her hair. And right. Thank God, she not just my dyed her hair. hair. That's why. <laughs> Listen, she has a Marin and I have a Marin. Isn't that crazy? Um, but she did not. My Marin is much younger. Um, this is turning into an episode of like the Golden Girls, and we probably should let you guys go because 
<laughs> you don't want to sit here and listen to us old women <laughs> cackle about how much we love each other, right? So therefore, happy birthday to this one. Thank you for joining us to this one. And thank you to hosting. Anna and Rachel, you're amazing. Thank you for putting this together. Thank you. Thank and you. I'll let you guys say the goodbye because this is not my show. It's yours. <laughs> I prefer things being the Melissa show. (laughs) Me too. Well, I guess that's a wrap then. We are well over an hour. Happy birthday, 80. It'll be in just a couple hours. Um, And we hope you guys got something um, and that we see you in Alaska or Norway or Australia or the Netherlands or reunion or wherever it may be. So yep, don't give up on yourself and make sure that you make that plan and that roadmap. Okay, guys. Right. Yep. And we know you can do it. Even if you don't know you can do it, we know you can do it. So just do it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll see you at the next trip.